and 12 now in time to check in with Lorraine. She's getting a look at the world of collectibles and antiques at Curiosity Inc. Good morning, Lorraine. Did you know that you might have a Rolex and not even know it? I had no idea, Alex. Rolexes came under different names. Yeah, they sure did. So back in the 20s and 30s, Rolex had a whole bunch of different names. So I'm going to show you one that uh, is probably a little bit more common. This is a watch called Tudor. Now, Tudor you can buy now at the stores, but um, they also have company names like Rolco and Gen X and things like that. So um, this is a good quality watch. It's made by Rolex. It says Tudor on the dial, not Rolex, but it is made by Rolex. And a giveaway is that it's got the Rolex crown, and it does sometimes say see by Rolex on the back. So why didn't they just call it a Rolex? Well, they wanted to create something different for the market. These were Tudors were a little bit more entry level, um, good quality, but uh, they also made them for uh, mainly like the colonies, like Australia and New Zealand. You didn't get these in the States. Ah, so are they valuable? Oh, sure, yeah. A watch like this could be $1,500 or so. Okay. Yeah. So now show us a different kind of watch. They had watches with like the stopwatch feature, even in the 30s and 40s. Who knew? Yeah, so this watch is from the 50s, and it's what they call a chronograph. So it would have a stopwatch function built into it. And it kind of looks like a normal watch on the outside, maybe kind of nice, but why collectors like them is look at the inside of what these look like. That's How many back. gears, that's the back, yeah. So there's so many gears and just the craftsmanship that went into building a watch like that is just stunning. So these are collectibles? Absolutely, yeah. Check in one of your drawers and I bet you anything, you may have one of those old pocket watches that maybe a great grandfather gave you or something like that. Okay, look at these two. One is worth a ton of money compared to the other. Can you tell which is which? I can't, Alex. Okay, so these are both made by Waltham. Um, the difference is um, this one is worth about $700. This one's worth about $150. And you think the bigger one, you yeah. think, well, that would be worth more, right? Well, no, this one is 17 joules. That's how many joules it has inside to pivot the gears on. And this one's 21, so this would be railway grade, railway quality. And this one's really cool because it's actually from a company called Diamond Hall in Calgary. So this was around 1900, and it's a jewelry store that does not exist anymore. Oh, okay, something else that doesn't exist anymore, Berlin, Canada. Have you ever heard of that? Look at the cigar clock. Tell us about that, Alex. Yeah, so... Berlin, Canada, uh, it, that's a great reference, actually, because that's how you can really date a lot of antiques. Berlin, Canada is now called Kitchener, Ontario, and after the World War I, they changed it from Berlin. So this is a cigar store clock. It would have been in a cigar shop back around 1900, and a uh, really cool Canadian piece. When we come back, pinball machines are back big time. We'll tell you why in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Lorraine. Curiosity Inc. is located on 100th Avenue and 164th Street here in Edmonton. For more information, you can reach them at 780-444-0386 or find them online at curiosityedmonton.ca. Thanks very much, Stacey. Well, it's time once again to check in with Lorraine. Yes, she's at Curiosity Inc. learning about all things antique. Hi, Lorraine. Be with you in just a second. This is Crossy Road. Are you a fan of video games? If you are, you may want to take a second thought about that because that is so yesterday. Can you believe it? So where's it at today if we want to be truly plugged in, Alex? Okay, so there are tons of people who are buying old pinball machines for their house. And they are having great fun with them. And uh, you can pick them up and uh, bring them home. And everybody loves to play, including the kids. Okay, you were telling me of this convention that took place in the States. Hey, my friend John is one of the top pinball players in town. He took his family on vacation to a pinball convention in the U.S. where thousands of people showed up just to play these old machines. And so did they have thousands of machines? Oh, it was amazing. He showed me pictures. It was crazy crazy. Okay, so for thinking of getting a pinball machine, are they all created equal? Well, not really, no. You want to make sure that the theme is exciting. So in this case, I've got uh, football, touchdown there, that's a cool theme. you got the racing one or soccer. And then secondary, does it do a lot of stuff? Uh, a lot of the new machines have multi-levels and multi-tiers. So theme and what does it do? This one comes with the paperwork. Does that add to the value of the machine? It sure does, yeah. If you ever have to get one fixed, it's really handy to have. Okay, I want you to come over and take a peek at this one because this one's sort of my favorite. I don't know if it's the colors or the lights or what it is, but give us an idea of why this might be valuable. Okay, so this machine came out in 1981. Um, they started getting into a little bit more of the fantasy theme, like Dungeons and Dragons was coming out around then. So it's got some great graphics. Um, it's got lots going on with it, and you want to make sure it conditions overall in good shape as well. So. All right, so you check this out for wear and tear. Mm -hmm. What do you check out with the, with the glass top? You, you make sure that the glass isn't broken or damaged. This is the trickiest thing to find on a pinball machine, so oftentimes this can, uh, this, the paint on the back can start to peel if it wasn't stored properly. So you want to make sure it's in great shape. And then the other thing you want to know is, 
it's moving on up from the rec room to the living room. I can't believe that. That's right. Why put the most fun thing in the house down in the basement? We're not going to use it. Bring it upstairs in the living room. Have fun with it all day long. Honest to goodness, a trend. Tell us about this slot machine. This is amazing. This is another thing that people are buying for their houses too. This is a 1920s slot machine from Vegas. And uh, just a great fun thing to have around. And if you're lucky, you might actually win something back too. And if you want to add to your home decor, oh my goodness, they're back. Yes, so these are motion lamps from the 1950s. You might have seen these in a, a relative's house or in their basement, but these are really coming back in and they are great decor. Okay, when we come back, do you know what this is? If you're a smarty pants and you do, do you know how it ties into Star Wars for real? We'll have details in just a few minutes. Mm. All right. All right. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Check out all the newest antiques. 8.14 and time to check in once again with Lorraine. She's at Curiosity Inc. finding some pretty unusual gadgets. Good morning, Lorraine. Have you brushed and flossed? If you have, smile. So I've given you a hint. Do you know what this is? Because that's what all these gadgets are. Guess what they are. So Alex, for people unfamiliar, if that flash popped in your eyes, you would know it. Oh, absolutely you would know it. So this originally was off of a Graflex camera. This would have been a professional reporter's um, camera. Like you see in the old movies, you know, the press comes oh, out, yeah. the, the flash tube. But when they were making Star Wars, yes. the uh, crafty folks over in the prop department there, they came across these flash tubes and they actually converted this into a lightsaber handle. So if you look at it, you won't be able to unsee it once I point it out to you. This is Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. lightsaber. For real. Yeah, so he would push the button, the lightsaber would come out, they just removed the end, and they added an LED strip right in this section right here. You'll never look at that the same again, will you? Okay, now that we're talking about movies, let's go to this. Because this came out of movie houses from maybe the 30s, and 40s? Yeah, you got it. So nowadays when you go to a movie and they play previews and they have all the games you can play on your phone, back then, if you wanted to see a commercial, they had to do it with slides. So this is a really early slide projector from a theater. So they put the commercial in, and this was somebody's job was to play the commercials. They'd slide it through, switch it out to the next commercial, and then keep going until all the commercials people had paid for got played. Where else would you get something for one cent? I know, they don't even have pennies nowadays. I know, I know. Okay, so now, can you guess what this is? It's really old. It's from the Alberta legislature, and from there, you're going to have to take it for us. Okay, that's called a DTEX security clock. And what that is is a night watchman's um, time clock. So he would carry that around with him on his entire shift, that heavy thing. And it is like over 10 pounds. And uh, whenever he got to his checkpoints, he'd have to clock in to prove that he was at that spot. It's got to make you like computers, don't you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, take a peek at this. Can you guess? This would have actually saved lives in World War One. Yes. Well, this is a Second World War unit, and this is called a Gibson Gal. This came out of a Lancaster bomber, and if their plane crashed or went down over water, they, if they got to this unit, it was buoyant, they would strap it to themselves, it would help keep them afloat, and it would send off an SOS signal. Cool. Take a peek down. Can you guess what that piece of equipment is? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with fighting fire? Yeah, so that's a really early forestry firefighting backpack. So it weighs well over 100 pounds, so I wouldn't envy the guy that had to carry that around. No uh, but they'd get to the, to the fire, they'd find a water source, whether it's a lake or a river, and they'd hook a hose up to it and pump directly from that pump right to the fire. All of these things are completely collectible and they're very old. This is not. It's a retro toy, but it's brand new because they're making them again. So this is from the movie Elf. This was what Will Ferrell started in, and that's what it does, makes you afraid of clowns. When we come back, retro toys in just a few minutes. Ooh. Thank you, Lorraine Aids. Mm. 844. Uh, we're checking with Lorraine again, who is at uh, Curiosity Inc. Yes, yeah, she's checking out some pretty cool collectible toys. How would you like to have this piece of furniture in your house? Look at this old cabinet, but take a peek at what's inside. Toys, toys, toys. So are they all created equal? That's the question. Come with me. You see this telephone? This would be reminiscent of the 60s, and you might say, oh my gosh, I've seen one of those before. But Alex, that's not old. No, I mean, what kid didn't have one of those in their, in their kid back in the 60s and 70s? But now parents want their kids to have the same types of toys they did. So companies have caught on and they're remanufacturing them. So this is meant to be old, mm -hmm. but it's brand new. Brand spanking new, this? yeah. New as well, made of tin, just like the old days, made of real cloth. Um, you, like you mentioned, it was in the movie Elf as well. He tested these for a living. Uh, and this one here, this Back to the Future set is a throwback toy. So this is a race car set, but you get to be the DeLorean being chased by Biff Tanner in his car, so. Okay, so this is one trend, shelf upon shelf upon shelf 
of what looks like retro toys, mm -hmm. but they're brand new. They are brand new. Okay, yeah. so that's one trend. Now, come on over here. If you're going through an attic, a garage, and you see something like this, these are the real McCoy. Yeah, and oftentimes we go through a house or a basement and there's just a box sitting in the basement with, you know, dad or uncle's old toys and they're missing just gold sitting down there. So we make an opportunity to buy them and bring them in the shop. So why are they more valuable if you've got the box to go with it? Well, people didn't really collect things back then and boxes were often thrown out. So sometimes the box can actually be worth more than the car itself. Okay, then we want to show you a couple of vehicles and you're not going to believe this. Okay, so one is worth about $20 and the other is worth thousands. How so, Alex? Okay, well, um, Hot Wheels, everybody's got Hot Wheels kicking around in buckets in the basement. This one is uh, what they call a traditional black wall, so, you know, regular Hot Wheel wheel. But if you find the right one, now this one's only worth about $20, $30, but if you find the right Hot Wheel with the red line around the tire, it's got the little red stripe, um, some of them can be worth thousands of dollars. Oh, okay. So in general, furniture, accessories, toys, when it comes to a collectible, what should we know before we toss it? Um, well, first, don't toss it until you oh. check with somebody. Um, there's a lot of times I see where people have thrown out something or told me they've thrown something out, and it could have been worth a lot of money. So always check with somebody. It never hurts. A lot of antique shops um, will give you a, a reference or an idea about what you have. And how do you price things? Um, we do research, have reference guides, books, looked at completed auction listings, so a whole bunch of different ways. It's all about saving a little bit of money. So that's something to keep in mind before you start tossing something. In the meantime, enjoy your day, everybody.